if I ever heard a man tell me like, oh, you know, I want to marry someone who doesn't wear hijab mm-hmm. before actually judging, I would be like, why? Like, what's your reasoning? Mm-hmm. Because like, I just I'm curious to know, like, what do you what's wrong with someone who wears hijab? Can I just say what? I feel like I just did a really counterproductive thing today. I whitened my teeth today with white strips. Honestly, I, I was wondering. I didn't want to say anything. I was wondering why your teeth kind of like... Look extra white or don't look white? Like they look white, but it has this like little like discoloration on the front. Why are you going to call me out on the podcast? Yeah, so now everybody's going to focus on that. No. I'm literally going to... We're just, cutting this out. I'm going to make a clip Mm-mm. where it's literally just focused Mm-mm. on your teeth the Mm-mm. whole time. <laughs> they won't be able to tell. They won't be able to tell. Like you have to like... Really ha- we're not using 4K, you know? So you know. No, we're cutting this out. We're actually no, don't, don't, don't. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry no. about it. You know what? What? Well, then I got to look at it now. No, it's fine. So my don't de- worry about it, Sada. You're my good. My dentist. You're good. Oh, right here? Yeah. What about my phone? Right here? Huh? Yeah. I'm sorry, Sarah. I forgot so- my phone. <laughs> Stop doing that voice. What's wrong with this voice? I, I feel like uh, I need to work on my voice acting. <laughs> no. What? Like I can't I can't work? voice act. You don't think I can it does this not sound like an old man? No. 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 Okay, I'll stop. That's probably the best the <laughs> the best <laughs> British accent you've done so Is far. it? <laughs> yeah, because usually you're pretty trash <laughs> today. <laughs> Did you watch the show I told you to? Which one? Champion? We're watching it after this. I'm not watching Champion. Yes, I'm you sorry. Are. No, 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 because I'm, And first off, after this you mean midnight? Okay. It's not- it is late, guys. It's okay. Late. It's not that late. Plus, we also got our... It's literally 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We stopped to get coffee. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, I've never really... I, I don't really drink Tim Hortons that much. Mm-hmm. Ever, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, since we're still boycotting Starbucks, uh, when I'm at work, mm-hmm. like at home, it's fine because I'm making coffee at home. Yeah. By the way, yeah. do you make ground coffee? No. Huh? No. So you have the beans originally? No, I just use an espresso machine. But what do you put in the espresso machine? You put ground coffee, no? I put the Nespresso pods. Nespresso pods, which have ground, ground coffee, coffee in them, right? Yes, yes. Did you know that there's an acceptable acceptable amount of cockroach that can be in those ground coffees? Yeah, th- which is why people was shellfish, shellfish, al- shellfish? allergies. Uh, people with shellfish allergies. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Okay. People with shellfish. <laughs> do not do the voiceover thing again? What? Where you just mouth it and I say it for you? Okay. People with shellfish allergies. <laughs> <laughs> we did that one time. Do you remember? <laughs> so they can't have ground coffee like the ones that come pre-ground because there's an acceptable amount of cockroach that can be in them because if you think about it like a lot of these coffee companies have to store the coffee beans in their plants and after a while when they're storing them in there you know bugs get in and they they can go through a sorting process but there's only so much they can really get out because there are pieces of them inside of there and they ground it so there's actually like a regulated amount of cockroach that can be in coffee grounds which is why people with shellfish allergies can't uh drink certain coffee brands i was today years old are, are you saying that cockroaches are shellfish uh like they <laughs> i best i guess they're part of the same family when it comes to like allergies you know why no that's not true why because my dad has a shellfish allergy and he only drinks ground coffee but but maybe he doesn't realize it that he might be getting good but like no he's like definitely it depends <laughs> not everyone who's allergic to shellfish mm-hmm. is also allergic to cockroaches but a lot a majority of them not majority of them but like a lot of people are i don't know if it's a majority it might be the majority but this is a thing listen if i don't see the cockroaches today I'm good. you learned <laughs> if i don't see them i'm fine yeah exactly you it know? all it's all brown anyways right <laughs> that, <laughs> and that meme of the little girl it's like yeah <laughs> with her buck teeth <laughs> i couldn't even do it i cut you off too i don't even know what were you talking about i don't know my bad my bad please tell me sada Wait, hold on. Brain yeah, blast. Brain blast. Uh, we oh, were- yeah. Okay, go back. Sorry, <laughs> I cut you off. My bad. I do that a lot. <laughs> the Tim Hortons thing. Yeah. Because I was going to say, boycotting Starbucks is so expensive. Mm-hmm. Like, 
for all my people who are lactose intolerant, listen. What do you mean it's expensive to boy? Oh, because you might have to go to the like more niche, not niche, but like boutique places. Uh, yeah. Not is boutique. that what they're called? No. Not boutique. They're called like, there's a name for them, but I don't know what it is. Like smaller coffee shops. Yeah. Yeah. Like the not as big franchise. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a, a better word for this for I sure, know. but what we just don't know it. Mom and pop? I ah, forget about it. It's okay. Anyway. Yeah. So as you guys know, I'm lactose intolerant mm-hmm. and like, I'm not about to play with that at work. Okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I have a phobia. I don't like to use the bathroom at work. Really? Yeah. I just, unless I'm dying. Oh yeah. You did mention that before. Yeah. yeah. Like I'd rather just not. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to play with my life and have milk. Oh yeah. That, honestly, mm. she's capping though. Cause she always be playing with her life and drinking milk and having dairy products. Listen, what? It's like, uh, the, the lactose intolerance mm-hmm. it has degrees, right? So, like, for me, milk is no-go zone. Cheese? Depends. Poutine cheese? Absolute no-go zone. Pizza cheese? Maybe. 50-50. It's all the same, is it not? It's actually not. How? I can't explain it. Science. I, I honestly is can't Is this, like, it. girl science? No, You know how there's, like, girl science. math? This is girl science. <laughs> it's, it's, re- <laughs> it's real. It's real science. And mm-hmm. then, like, ice cream? Mm-hmm. Depends on the quality of ice cream. Like, McDonald's ice cream, the yeah. cone, or the McFlurry? Like sending me to the ER, basically. Honestly, even me when I'm drinking, not drinking, whenever I'm eating like McDonald's ice cream, I do, I li- I can feel that it has more dairy in it. It's a weird thing. Like it feels it heavier. Yeah. Heavier than having like the regular hard ice cream. I don't know what you call that. Like Cold Stone. For like example. Cold Stone or something. Yeah. That one feels lighter. I don't Maybe know what the, it is. The quality of the dairy is better. I don't know. McDonald's ice cream for sure. Like if I. Why are we talking about our bowel movements? If I'm constipated, I'm going to go to McDonald's. <laughs> Didn't we talk about that like in previous episode too, like recently? I don't know. I can't remember now. I think now. we did. Yeah. But the, the point of my story mm-hmm. is that I was spending like seven, eight dollars for lattes at work and I it like broke my heart and then everyone else mm-hmm. would be like, you're so bougie. Like, why don't you just use the office coffee? Yeah. Well, first of all, the coffee machine is hooked up to 2% milk, like the carton oh. and it like makes it together, right? Yeah. So don't you guys have the pod machine too? I think we have a Keurig, but like, uh, what? You literally, Sara, you literally just said that you had a pod coffee there machine at a, home. Yeah, an espresso, not a Keurig. It's the same thing. And the only kind of they only have one type of pod. There's not varieties. Buy buy <laughs> <laughs> buy my own and use them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have the Tim Hortons one. Okay, what's wrong with Timmy's? What's because, wrong with Timmy's? There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, there's just like you know, there's no like. I can't put cinnamon. I think they just recently put like a cocoa. You are like, bougie. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your coworkers are right. <laughs> okay. But, then, but here's the thing. What? So a couple months ago, the lovely woman at my job who mm-hmm. stocked the kitchen for us. Yeah. She's a real one. Okay. She's always like, oh, come. I have snacks. I'm like, take whatever you want. You mm-hmm. get first dibs. Because the, the people at work are savages. Yeah. When they see her rolling with that cart, they run to the I'm kitchen. I'm one of those people <laughs> in my office. <laughs> so she'll always give me like the chips, the cookies, whatever. Yeah. Like, first so one day she's like um i was like do you know like if they're ever going to be inclusive about like the non-dairy drinkers Mm -hmm. like almond milk she's like oh are you lactose intolerant and i was like yeah and she's Mm -hmm. like okay let me put in an order of almond milk for you yeah this was last year and i had like i spoke to her and then i think the next week i went to europe with Mm -hmm. i went to portugal and stuff yeah and then I never, like, every single time I open the fridge to put my lunch in there, I always see the almond milk and I feel guilt. <gasps> Wait, so, so she, she did keeps, do it. Yeah, so she, it's like on rotation now. So it's always in the fridge. And, and you never, and you, you don't use it anymore? No, what am I going to, this is, this is why, this so is why now, when we speak up as minorities <laughs> in this community, okay, <laughs> they don't take us seriously, okay? <laughs> well, now what I'm thinking of doing is just like drinking tea and then just dropping some almond milk to say that I use it. You know? yeah at this point like you 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 owe it to her to like drink a nice fresh cup of almond milk every single day and it's a silk brand too she's yeah. not getting that like uh and it's unsweetened too <laughs> like she really was trying <laughs> she's like yeah this is gonna work for your calories too <laughs> only 30 calories per serving i know she's a real one Ugh. but Sometimes like you know I'm, what i'm thinking what? of like swapping out the carton because you know how i told you the coffee machine is a two percent yeah like they're not gonna know it's covered behind a door i could just open the door and put the is that how it works yeah because it basically like this tube is yeah we had that in our workplace too but it wasn't it wasn't like in a container it was like well it was in container but it wasn't taken directly out of the container that the milk came in the carton you mean yeah 
No, this one is like the tube goes into the carton of mm-hmm. milk. So I'm thinking. That seems a lot more efficient than what we had to do. Did you put in a separate thing? Yeah, I had like a separate like basically cup that you just filled up the cup. Oh, but then yeah. you constantly have to refill it, right? Yeah. Was it big? Well, I guess it's not really that much more work. What? Mm-hmm. Like, was it, did it hold a lot of milk? No, it was tiny. So just put the carton in there. Well, they got rid of it eventually, so it didn't oh, matter. They, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because it kept breaking. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Welcome back, guys, to the Cousin Connection Podcast. podcast. <laughs> So what were we talking about originally? Shoot, we got distracted here. First off, we forgot to mention this last week. Happy Black History Month. Yeah. Happy Is it Black Happy is- Black History Month? Would oh, you say that? No. I don't know. It's Black History. It's bas- It's Black History Month, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with me today? <laughs> I don't know. Is it the co- Drink some coffee. Yeah, I think I need to drink more coffee. Even- By the way, French vanilla with an espresso shot, 10 out of 10. That's probably the only coffee I will ever get from Starbucks. Uh <gasps> from tim hortons <gasps> i know i just realized from tim hortons ever again Oops. what have you been doing have, have you secretly been going you know to no me, I'm saying, okay no do you ever like drive by or walk by a starbucks and just look inside and be like i wonder if there's any hijabis in here because they're like the ones who are clearly you know what every time i pass the starbucks i do a scan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be like do i see any muzzies in here exactly <laughs> what are y'all doing in here hmm? or mcdonald's uh there's no mcdonald's near me but oh really okay yeah. but then again i don't really pass by a lot of mcdonald's either but there yeah. is one and like sometimes i mean scanning you know the drive throughs because you know they, they might be smart enough to not be seen inside but you know the mm. drive throughs i'm just saying man it's a little easier to get away that way tinted windows <laughs> sometimes sometimes my coworkers, like my one coworker, i mm-hmm. think she just doesn't realize that I'm, I'm i don't drink starbucks coffee yeah so like there have been days where i would come into work and there mm-hmm. would be a coffee on my desk and i'm like <gasps> so nice but like uh, do you still drink it though because technically you didn't pay for it i do <gasps> or okay, i have no, i'm fine i'm fine it, <laughs> it, it, it was it was actually just like one time but i did tell her after that yeah. i was like look you know like don't waste your money i'm mm-hmm. good thank you though i really yeah did you tell it. her why no no come on you gotta confront them you gotta be ready like, to have that political conversation mm. at work I, I think i spoke about it before but like there's a co-worker who like walked in with starbucks and she's like i know okay i'm sorry you know i it was, it was like on the way she's like trying to like justify make excuse, it justify it for me i'm like she's mm-hmm. it's like i i i feel for all of humanity she's like sorry going to be i feel for all of humanity like i don't know what's going on this is a little bit early on she's like i don't know what's mm-hmm. going on but like you know i've been reposting i've been reposting <laughs> you know I, I i don't have all the details but i've definitely been supporting and reposting and stuff but you know my starbucks man and i was like you know what people are that addicted eh yeah some people need it and they don't need it i mean like some people are just like they're they're bought into the system it, it'd be like it'd be like telling it'd be like saying like um apple is now on the bds list yeah <sighs> exactly like would all all you guys would you, all of you guys if apple was on the bds list but would it, you it doesn't make sense to throw out your phone because that's just like wasteful being wasteful like i just wouldn't repurchase yeah, but people and hold on eventually, to eventually life. will get to that point where they'd be like, okay, I do need a new phone. Let's see, you crack your phone. Are you going to use that Apple Care? Are you going to pay for that Apple Care? I'm just saying, you know? I yeah. go to Pacific Mall. Uh-huh. Not justifying, <laughs> you know, their thing. Yeah, I guess you go to Pacific Mall, get like the off brand stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't be selling their, their legitimate stuff anymore. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, so. Apple does that on purpose. Did you see recently with uh, the new um, Vision Pro? Mm-hmm. coming out here like there's a video of a guy from toronto who like spent 24 hours in it and it's actually crazy like how the the thing about this technology especially in like the nerd community or like the electronic enthusiast community is that like because it's new like everybody's eyes are on it and it's the first time that we're actually excited again about technology mm. because like technology especially in the phone realm has been like so stagnant yeah. like there, there hasn't been many changes everybody's been making those jokes how like the iphone 14 is basically the iphone 15 is basically the iphone 14 like it's the same phone with a couple upgrades like and yeah. insignificant upgrades and that's pretty much the same story for almost all phones coming out these days yeah. like i went from recently when i broke my phone last week i mentioned that i went from a pixel 6 to a pixel 8 mm-hmm. and i honestly can't really tell the difference 
Like for me, it's the same phone. There's like maybe slight... it's a li- yeah, it's like slightly faster. Yeah, but like I wasn't, I didn't even have any issues with my Pixel Six before. I was like, I can keep going with this. I honestly like shout out to that Pixel Six because it. Mm-hmm. The camera quality on that, like we filmed a lot of our episodes on that. Yeah, phone. like I think even people I mentioned it last time too. People were like complimenting, "Oh, look, that camera's making you look good," and it's that kind of things. Like that was on my Pixel Six. That and even like when we had Hidaya House on here, yeah. like where they reached out and she's like, "Girl, everybody, did you see the DM?" Yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just like everyone wants to know what cam- what phone mm-hmm. um you guys used for like their footage. Little did they know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with an android but you know what yeah. to be fair we've never actually tried to like film on my phone but the thing is that like i feel like apple has the reason that everybody thinks apple looks better mm. and there's also another reason i mentioned how like they're more integrated in the apps yeah but it's also because they there's a look that you guys got used to because every time a camera takes a picture that company has their own way of processing that picture <clears throat> and how google processes the picture versus how samsung processes the picture versus how apple processes the picture is very is different i wouldn't say very different but it's different and they all have their own unique look and some people i guess over time a lot of people have kind of gravitated more towards the apple look which is why they just inherently think it looks better but whenever someone like mkbhd the guy that i mentioned a while ago you know him the electronics guy marcus brownlee exactly i was just watching his video today about the apple vision yeah oh yeah see there yeah of course man day one i'm just saying (laughs) um but him he actually does this competition i think every year Mm -hmm. where he takes a bracket of all the phones the latest oh my god i watched that you saw that one too right yeah and he'll put iphone on there Yeah, yeah yeah and when it starts breaking down he he puts the poll i think on like twitter and instagram i think it's just twitter i'm not sure exactly but he puts a poll up and then eventually gets down to like the final two and a lot of times the iphone doesn't really make it that far when it comes to quality of picture but then like there's people are just used to the look of an apple iphone with apple photo Mm. a photo taken on an apple device yeah i got you and yeah i had to (laughs) rewear that a couple of times (laughs) So, and they're not really interested in looking at Android photos anyways. And a lot of times when people upload Android photos, like because the apps aren't um, gearing their technology towards Android phones, they look worse, then people just automatically think they're better. But then when you actually take a raw photo from one Android versus an Apple phone, you realize that like you really lose on a lot of quality. I have a theory. What? And I've been thinking about this for a while, especially when it comes to like, phone quality mm-hmm. uh photo quality on the phones mm-hmm. i feel like in general uh whenever men take photos like i feel like you you guys gravitate or you i feel like you tend to like the sharpness of a mm-hmm. photo more whereas women tend to soften their photos so maybe that's why they they gravitate towards more like iphone quality photos yeah. but men like the android quality photos or samsung or google whatever yeah i can see that for sure but i think now i feel like yeah you know what you're kind of right in that because i feel like a lot of men choose to go towards like the iphone route now Mm. because initially i feel like there was a lot of that there was a very like um clear line between like men and women when it comes to who had an android fan at a iphone Mm -hmm. but now a lot of men are like choosing to pick up the iphone just because like social pressure essentially like they don't it could want also to be like the simplicity of it. Mm. Um, no, because sometimes men like, I feel like they like trying to figure mm. something out. They like the, okay, I'm just assuming here, but they like um, the the um, freedom that comes with an Android and like the, the customization. customization. Exactly. I got you. you know what I'm going with, right? I got you. I got yeah. You. So they like that. Mm-hmm. But because of the social pressure of people like judging you for having the green bubble or like not being able to airdrop easily mm. or just the, the ecosystem with Apple that Apple comes with, they just go towards that. Cause they, they feel like, you know, the women now that it's known that women will judge a guy for having an Android. Not really. You guys say not really you say it's a joke, but I don't think it's a joke. I think for real women do judge men for having Androids. Uh, I'm past that. Uh, like- you're past that. But society <laughs> You know what it is? First of all, Mm -hmm. like I think one of the issues of why they were judging or not judging, but like making it difficult Mm -hmm. was because of like FaceTime, for example. But now you can FaceTime an Android. You just send them the link. 
Oh, can you? Yeah, you need to download the FaceTime app, but mm-hmm. like you can FaceTime Apple to Android phones. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a lot of us use WhatsApp. Yeah, I use WhatsApp all the time. Well, I don't really call that much on it, but I do use WhatsApp if I'm going to do FaceTime or any type of video call. Yeah. Because it just seems easier. Yeah. And the only thing I wish mm-hmm. Androids had was AirDrop. If you guys had AirDrop. I feel like that's the one thing that I wish they would integrate. Yeah, maybe. Or allow other companies to integrate. Do you think they would? Well, the thing is that like when Apple feels like they have like a reason to keep people. It, it's, it's, re, it's basically like uh, why they don't allow people to have iMessage on other devices. Because iMessage is just an app in itself. They're, they're making the platform, not the platform. Sorry, the, the technology behind the text messaging, they're updating it, Apple is, to be more with the times. So I feel like that will be easier. But like they'll still probably have the green versus blue bubble thing just so they can differentiate between android and apple and they don't have to but they think they're still, they're, they're just going to do that so they keep everyone thinking like oh you know i want to be sure i make sure that i still have the blue bubble you know i want to be with the crowd right i guess and same thing with airdrop like airdrop they know that if they were to give that away mm-hmm. or allow other companies to utilize the, that technology then it would give people less of a reason to stick with apple you know yeah i, I mean they could still Mm-hmm. keep that advantage if they just allow uh, um apple phones to airdrop to to androids but like androids can't airdrop to each other you know what i mean like if if the ability to airdrop was like exclusively from apple to android mm-hmm. or android to apple but once but that not, technology is kind of shared and i feel like yeah. i feel like it is something as possible mm-hmm. they're just not allowing it it's like they literally it's an artificial barrier being built there yeah. and you're not allowed to do this even though the technology is there it's been there for a long time it's their business. They're trying to maintain their mm-hmm. competition, right? Or, yeah. Uh, their their leg up or their not advantage, their, leg, their advantage. Their, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But we were I talking about the Apple, Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> right. Okay. I, I honestly, like, while I was watching Marcus's mm-hmm. video, like, it's cool. But, like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Like, what's actually the point? You're telling me you're going to wear this $4,000 goggle set? Well, like, that's the thing. I feel like right now it's more for the electronic enthusiasts mm-hmm. because we see the potential right like this is their first product the revision one think about the first iphone that was ever came, that ever came out remember that thing it was like a brick I remember it had a very, very like vividly. very like, like black and silver yeah black and silver low low resolution screen mm-hmm. but at that point like only people who were really in that field or like really enthusiastic about that technology knew where it could go right wasn't it the first like mm-hmm. all touch screen phone um technically there are other the phones but like in the in the manner that it was done that that was like the first i guess yeah i remember like I've, i actually remember that mm-hmm. time it was like love at first sight for me and apple because i remember like because we had the ipod touches before that too no did we not no no no. oh that came after yeah yeah, came yeah, after. yeah we didn't we, have that we, i don't know i think we had flip phones back then but like the first mm-hmm. time that i saw like An celebrities iPhone? using the yeah. oh my god i was so impressionable that man. was also a big thing that really got them out there is that putting it into the hands of celebrities right and like they have that clause where in movies Mm -hmm. only for apple they said only the good characters can have apple iphones what yeah where did you see that bad characters or like the the antagonists are not allowed villains are not allowed to have where'd you see that huh where'd you see it's a rule for apple you're not they're not allowed to showcase their product in the hands of the of of the villains or like the antagonist. Interesting. Yeah. I and that's a that. one way of like psychologically still connecting Yo. Apple towards like something more positive, which is why you'll usually see someone who's like the protagonist of the story or the person the good person, I guess. I don't know, in lack of a better term, what right now that I can remember. But like they're the ones who are usually holding an iPhone, if they are holding one interesting mm-hmm. i actually didn't know that that was even a clause but really yeah I didn't okay know well yeah this, there you go you learn a new thing today but yeah so uh the reason that we think it's so cool is because first off like the fact that they got a lot of things right on the first revision where like when you put it on everything stays in place as you expect there's no jittering it's very solid technology and they kind of like made some strong points are like okay we're not gonna have anything to connect this to a computer it's gonna be just you and then you have your battery pack that's it because a lot of the vr headsets that you have now are connected to 
like you can connect them to a computer i think this one maybe you can still do it, but there's like different ways i'm not sure exactly how it works i don't think that's maybe it's not a thing yet but like because it's revision one it looks big and bulky mm. but think about five years from now when they can get the those chips to be a lot smaller the cameras to be a lot smaller the headset to be a lot smaller to the point where it'll be half the size it'll look like ned was it ned's declassified school survival yeah survival like you had those guy? glasses uh, with the what the do you call thing. it yeah i've always wanted that well, actually no that was uh his friend right forget his name cookie cookie yeah <laughs> look at me he had that and funny enough mm-hmm. that actually the thing he had was technically made by google already or microsoft i think it was google yeah the google glasses where they had uh glasses and had a little screen on the top that would be like it would it was very small and it would like project onto the glasses but i feel like that would mess with your vision like if it's like right there but the spatial reality is what it's called Uh, vr well technically this is kind of ar it's vr but they're the way they recreate everything that's around you makes it seem like it's ar yeah but like reality. right and mm-hmm. so like if i was just to put on a pair of glasses mm-hmm. and i could see like a screen in front of me but it's not like right here <laughs> it's like you know well like no no no. the screen will be projecting there but then like they they warp the perspective right or they they play with the perspective so even though the screen is projecting onto the glasses right in front of you they'll make whatever you're looking at look like it's in a good distance away okay okay yeah and i never put on that that technology myself and unfortunately like because of how it's just structured it's very hard to capture that kind of thing and show it maybe which is why it didn't catch on so much because people need to see it to believe it Mm -hmm. um but that was like how many years ago like 10 plus years ago so I feel like if they kept going with that, mm-hmm. we might be seeing Apple Visions with just the glasses. But uh, they kind of gave up on technology, maybe because there just wasn't a lot of market for it at the time. But now I feel like the market is kind of there now that people can see it. You think so? Don't you think that people are interested now in the Apple Vision? Have you not seen the views on these videos and like the pictures and all the um, yeah but i feel like people are just watching out? it out of curiosity but they're not like all right let me go drop 4k on yeah the price is definitely like a big issue mm-hmm. but that's how everything new like when flip phones not flip phones these foldable phones are coming out which you probably have no interest in at all mm-hmm. but like when they first start coming out they were like two thousand plus dollars for I mean, them so are iphones what iphones are two thousand plus dollars no they're like a thousand no no, if you're getting like one terabyte iPhone, mm-hmm. um, like the Pro. Whatever. Oh no, I'm talking about like base model flip phones were like two thousand dollars oh, almost, or maybe that's crazy, or like maybe like sixteen hundred. But they're 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 definitely more than your average top of the line phone, right? Mm-hmm. But the reason for that is because it's the first generation of th- that technology, right? Yeah. So in order to recoup the cost, they know that the only people that are going to be buying this are like the enthusiasts the people who are interested in this technology. Mm-hmm. And because that's such a small crowd, they have to make the price a lot higher so they can kind of recoup some of that money mm-hmm. and then reinvest it into making the technology more efficient and then eventually getting it to a point where they can first make it a lot sleeker and also affordable. So you might see that the next version of the Apple Vision Pro will be at like 2000 And then eventually they can get it down to like the price of a little bit higher than what you can get an iPhone for like which is like what like sixteen hundred dollars now yeah so uh i'm just interested in where it's gonna go honestly would you want i'm I'm assuming you want to try it um i would hope that like other companies because i don't have an apple myself i was just gonna say are you really gonna say no i'm gonna wait for another company to do it because i don't want to buy it because it's apple i feel but also it's also because i feel like you have to really be bought into the apple ecosystem to really utilize the um apple vision experience because one cool thing was like you can have your macbook pro in front of you and then you can when you have the headset on you can kind of pull up a second screen that and make it as big as you want you can make it as big as a room and it'll be like an additional screen to your to your laptop so it's not the same screen mirrored it's literally an additional screen so you can drag things to it let's say you're editing like Mm -hmm. the way that i thought about it a lot of people who in the video editing, editing realm. Uh, realm 
their first thought was like, oh, I can make the timeline a lot bigger now because the issue when you're editing a lot of times... That's kind of cool. Yeah, is that the timeline sometimes can get a little small depending on how lar- large the video is, how many assets you have, or how many um, lines of video you have. I forget what you call it again. But uh, yeah, that can make it a lot easier to see what you're trying to edit. So and I definitely thought about that too. So if another came- company came out, because usually whenever one company comes out with something... Now that other companies can kind of buy that, Mm -hmm. deconstruct it, reverse engineer it, figure out how they make it work and then do it themselves there and have that competition out there. Because more like most likely you're going to see in a couple of years that like Google is going to come out with their own glasses uh, that are about about half the price. Because, of course, Apple is notorious for having very high prices for basically the same products that other companies are giving out, sometimes even better products that other companies are giving out. But yeah, I'm, I'm just excited on what's going to come forward from that. Basically, mm-hmm. what I gather is that the, um, not the opportunities, but the capabilities of this headset mm-hmm. <laughs> is like, you know, it's, I don't want to say endless, but like there are a lot of different capabilities that have yet to be discovered of like what it can do. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Always going back to this is just the first version. Just yeah. like when we talk about AI, like when it first came out, mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, what is this? You know, how can we utilize, utilize this? They're using it for very rudimentary stuff. But now where it is today is like yeah. next level. And technology, like it's exponential in a way that uh, we were kind of like at a plateau. But then whenever it does start to increase, it kind of increases at a like very sharp rate Yeah. before it plateaus again. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. we're kind of getting to that curve where it's starting to curve back up before. Because I feel like, like I mentioned with the phones, it was very flat. Like technology was kind of not moving much mm-hmm. every year in all realms. Like it was kind of like staying the same. Yeah. AI came out. So in the AI realm, like that one kind of like blew up. But that's kind of a new technology in itself. But other than that, other te- electronics were kind of at plateau. But now it's kind of like blowing up again. Which is exciting for people who are interested in technology, like me, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm just here for, just to see. We're here happens. for the vibes. You're here, you're here to vibes. figure out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I do have to say, mm-hmm. we hit six thousand subscribers. Oh yeah. We actually hit it mm-hmm. the day that we posted last week's episode, so yeah. Thursday. Um, thank you guys so much. Y'all are real. Um, we really appreciate all the love. I mm-hmm. think that, you know, I. I was thinking about the growth that we've had over the last, what, two, two almost three years. Yeah. Because it's about to be three years soon of mm-hmm. Cousin Connection, which was crazy. And I just think that, like, the the family has grown in such an organic way mm-hmm. that you can't even, like, I, I, I kind of almost prefer it this way. I think yeah, had we been, like, catapulted into virality. Yeah um i don't even think we would be able to handle it Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i don't know how we would do it um and this way i feel like we've we've been able to remain authentic to who we are Mm -hmm. and grow with our audience exactly so thank you yeah it's a more like it's very hard to be sustainable when you blow up that quickly Mm -hmm. because now you're getting calls from different people like you're trying to you, you might you don't know if you're making the right moves by like accepting certain things because now you're throwing to the limelight you can get a lot of opportunities. You don't know which ones are right. You don't know which ones are wrong. But like, yeah. if you grow organically and slowly, and like you you continue to just serve the audience that you're currently building and being uh, respectful of their time and like try not to mislead them in any way, like you, I feel like that builds a good foundation. Yeah. For eventually, when you do see that exponential growth, yeah, and, and you're, in front, you're actually ready for it. And I feel like we're we're really solidifying um, the cousin connection brand. Mm-hmm and what we stand for and i i'm really happy that you know you guys have also allowed us to be ourselves and stand up for what we believe in mm-hmm. but also grow you know sometimes we say some pretty messed up stuff on here. do we i don't Not think that so. messed don't up think so. but like you know okay. some of y'all correct me or i'm here and there and i'm like yeah yeah you i see your point yeah you're mm-hmm. right and you know it has definitely helped me grow and just open my eyes to like a whole other world that I probably mm-hmm. would have never paid attention to. So all of this is to say thank you. We love you all. Thank you. How did I do that voice? Word? Thank you. No, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> thank I forgot you I lost so it. Much. Yeah. Um, no, we really appreciate you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, inshallah, 2024 is going to be a big year for us. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've like, I think we talked about like, I'm sure I mentioned that. What? No, no, no. 
<laughs> like we okay what she's talking about like we have talked about like doing like a live event of some sort mm-hmm. but like not like soon it would take it would take a lot of planning you we'll know we'll let you guys know yeah but like cousin connection live maybe Maybe? We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's we've we've toyed around with it. Like, if you guys have TikTok, make sure you're following us because we do a lot of lives mm-hmm. on there now. I feel like it's been such a great way to connect with mm-hmm. with a lot of you guys, and we've made so many friends on there. Like, we see regular people on there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like you know, when we plan it all out, we will obviously let you guys know. Mm-hmm. We would love to see y'all see y'all and hang out and just like Mm -hmm. allow you guys to meet each other too Mm -hmm. so um yeah (laughs) oh actually on the note of like six thousand subscribers we also decided to do A. &A. (laughs) so if you guys listened to last week's episode i was making a point about um how marriage and uh having children is oftentimes equated to being successful in life Mm -hmm. and one of our friends actually said i disagree so i'm like can you please share your thoughts elaborate And I'm going to read what he said. Mm -hmm. New new, if you're listening to this, (laughs) calling you out. Okay. So he said, everyone may have a different purpose, but the ultimate purpose should be to have a family and raise proper children. This is human nature. And I would say 90% of women would want this. So not to make this the norm. I find that wrong. If that makes sense. Hmm. Mm. I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, naturally, as in like what we, uh, what women's bodies are capable of. Yes, uh, we have the ability to carry children, like bear children, sorry. So yeah, that is the natural progression. However, it's it's like, for example, going through puberty is natural. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me someone who's nine years old doesn't go, to pu- go through pu- puberty yet. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's not a good example. Hold on, let me think of another example. So when it comes to what he said there... Mm. I feel like there's like certain things. There's like certain things you ought to do versus things that you should do or like must do. Mm -hmm. Like there's the obligations. And then there are things that are recommended to do, right? It's never said that it's a must for a Muslim to get married, right? And sure. And there are like plenty of cases of scholars back in the day who used to literally would like isolate themselves. Not saying like it was, it was. Uh, cheered on but like they would isolate themselves not get married not have children and like go out into the mountains and just like worship worship Allah. worship constantly right mm-hmm. and sure people might say okay you know like I may have an opinion on that mm-hmm. but in islam's coming from an islamic sense like there's technically nothing wrong with what they did so i'm just saying like well, like nothing wrong in that um, yeah no i get what you mean they're not sinning exactly mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so as long as you're not sinning, like by you not getting married, it doesn't mean that you're not sinning. Unless like uh, there's special cases where like you can't help yourself. Like let's say there's thing you have certain desires that you can't help yourself from doing. Then at that point, you're kind of obligated to get married, or well, it's 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 you, recommended that you get married. Yeah. But if you can control yourself in those cases, then you know, do you boo boo? You know. <laughs> yeah, I I understand his mm-hmm. point, but my point was not like. All I'm trying to say, I'm not saying that staying, I got to pick my words carefully. Mm -hmm. Okay. All I'm saying is that there are instances, there are scenarios where Mm -hmm. people don't get married Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Maybe they don't want to, maybe they can't, maybe they're struggling with it, whatever the case may be. All I was trying to say was that we shouldn't shame people into thinking that they're less than. That's Mm -hmm. all. That's all I was really. Yeah. I think that was the main point. Yeah. Like I, I understand he's saying like, no, but it's natural. So like you should be doing that or you should be encouraged to do it. Mm-hmm. I understand that. And and in Islam, it is encouraged for people to get married. Getting married really mm-hmm. brings a lot of blessings to your life. Children are blessings. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so I'm not uh, speaking down to any of that. I, I just was just trying to say like, for anyone that's not in that position of having kids or being married, mm-hmm. there, there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfectly fine. Yeah. And and just because you are single um, doesn't mean that you're less than somebody who's not single, or just because you're not a parent doesn't mean that you're less than someone who is a parent. Yeah, we're we're not we're not really speaking to the fact of whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing to get married or have children. We're just speaking more to the fact that like you should not be chastised if you do, or you shouldn't be looked down upon like you just mentioned if whether or not you do have children or get married. Exactly, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna tell him that uh, I'll respond to him later. But. <laughs> um, 
Okie dokie. So, we didn't give enough time for these questions, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. We'll just ask whatever is here. Mumina says, so proud. I remember watching the Milk Sibling episode and being hooked. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mumina. She also sent a question. What has been... Is that her... Mumina is like the name on there? Are you sure? Or is Mumina like a nickname on there? I think it's a her nickname. If that's if that's your actual name, that's the first time I've ever heard Mumina. That's very unique. Mumina. Okay, shout out to Mumina. Um, she said, "What has been your most memorable moment of the podcast so far?" Oh, probably like the uh, the Hot Wins challenge. Hot <laughs> Wins challenge for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Although I I didn't enjoy that one. <laughs> no. I was crying. It was really painful. Yeah, but it was like a fun kind of cry, right? yeah sure (laughs) you know it's like we're both suffering together kind of cry (laughs) right i kind of want to do the like a hot ones challenge again the what you want to do it again no 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 no. we're good one chip challenge one no remember didn't they say that was discontinued because like yeah it like killed somebody yeah there's a there's a girl who like you know she died you know because it was so hot i don't know if i'll get demonetized for saying that where apparently youtube's been weird but yeah like she actually like you know passed away from it (gasps) yeah i didn't know that yeah like i think maybe I was fully she didn't have like, access to certain things or maybe she, she like had a certain um like a heart condition or like something? a condition yeah that kind we of we don't have heart it. conditions i think we'll be fine right? but the fact that someone died from it no. is kind of crazy but yeah you know what you know what if it's available i'm down to do it yeah How yeah bad could be? if if i survive don't say that if I Don't survived the Hot Ones challenge, yeah, I will survive the One Chip challenge. No, this is worse, apparently. Do you think so? <sighs> worse than the. You bomb? know what? You know, we'll find out if we can get the chip. Like, yeah. would you actually do? What would you do it for? Hmm? Well, we have to do it for something. We can't just do it for nothing. Hmm. Get us to seven thousand subscribers, and we'll do the One Chip challenge. There you go. Seven thousand subscribers, we'll do the One Chip challenge. We could, they could do that. You, you all, yeah, listen. just let everyone know. Every single one of you who are watching the video right now or <laughs> listening to the audio, make an extra account. No, and don't subscribe. To- <laughs> just send it to your friend, your family, <laughs> your mom, your dad, anybody you want, mm-hmm. and make sure they subscribe. Yeah, but Hot Ones Challenge has definitely been like the one that I remember the most. Yeah, I would say that. And I think um, our like the fact that we did travel vlogs last year. That was really nice. And I like looking back. Okay, yeah, like outside of the podcast realm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that. um, Yeah, that's about it. That's about it. And and I think just like like the everyday conversation, like, you Mm -hmm. you know, when we got really busy at one point and we just didn't film for, or no, we weren't busy. We were sick. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) For like a couple of weeks. Yeah. Or like when we have guests back to back Mm -hmm. and then we finally come back to filming with just me and you and I'm like, oh, I kind of miss this. Yeah. Like those are memorable moments. Because like also for me, it's like, "Ah, there's so much stuff I want to talk about that's happening, but we have a guest this week. I can't talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Yeah. that's definitely, I, I, I do like those episodes where like we come back to like uh, after a guest like we come back to like a regular podcast so we can kind of cover the things we haven't talked about yet mm-hmm. yeah that's definitely fun it also makes my editing a lot easier <laughs> 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 okay so lana elg lana dot elg says if you had to get married to someone in the next five minutes who would I saw, it be i saw that question ahead of time i'm like you think i'm just gonna say someone right now let me think are I'm you actually answer. gonna say a name okay go ahead who are you? nick jonas no you wouldn't yeah no i wouldn't Oh, Lana ELG asked another one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this one's good. Only be able to live in Canada and never leave or never be able to enter Canada again. One, two, three. Never, never be, be able, able to, to enter, enter Canada, Canada again. again. Yeah. <laughs> I, knew it. I was trying to go with you. I literally like messed up. I was like, whatever. I'll just go with you. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that one too. Yeah. If, you, if you're new here, mm-hmm. we... Are you new here? It's expensive to live here. So we always talk SHIT about it. Yeah. Okay, he is a good one. Mm-hmm. Hafsa asks, what does success look like for you, to you? It's such a boring answer, man. For me, success is like, you know, I'm on my dean, you know, um, I'm going to be able to support all the people I'm able, that I want to support. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just be happy. That's all it is. I don't care about money or anything else. Okay, don't make that face. Don't make that face sad, okay? <laughs> he just wants to be I happy. I just want to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah same it's really exactly like who else 
everyone is on the pursuit of happiness okay <laughs> if you're on if you're on your dean mm-hmm. your mental health is looking up mm-hmm. your physical health is looking up you got friends and if you're if you're you what? know you know what i'm about to reference right now my boy maslow's hierarchy of needs if your hierarchy of needs are stacked up basically mm-hmm. to me that's success if you have your psych physio- physiological needs mm-hmm. so the basic needs if you have your i can't remember what the anyways well wow, you went to school for this i know hopefully you have the triangle <laughs> put it up right here okay what if i just don't put it up there <laughs> Please put it up. okay you okay need to know what i'm talking I'll put about it I'll, I'll put it up I'll put i gotta it up. google it real quick now yeah Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy yeah do you know do i can't you know even that? say i can't say that word you know hierarchy 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 okay so that's good <laughs> enough okay yeah the physiological needs so breathe mm-hmm. breathing food water shelter clothing sleep. he mentioned breathing I, don't know, it's in here. <laughs> like, I mean if you're not breathing you're dead so like <laughs> i don't know but like it's like that's the most basic that's like literally all life i don't think he put it in here i think whoever made this did mm-hmm. but the next one is like safety and security are you safe are you in a healthy environment et yeah etc et love and belonging you have friends family int- mm-hmm. intimacy sense of connection the next one is self-esteem so confidence achievement respect of others the need to be a unique individual mm-hmm. and the last one is self-actualization so morality creativity spontaneity acceptance existence purpose meaning and inner potential i feel like if you satisfy for me if mm-hmm. i've satisfied this entire triangle i'm successful in life yeah the, you know what like but i feel like that's just mentioning everything though that's like saying but that's what i just the said. way that i measure success is that everything in my life is going <laughs> no <laughs> no no go. no but like so like and this is not like mm-hmm. in a in a i'm not talking i'm not adding. i guess like, I, you know what you know what's mix, missing the context of that question because success can mean like in so many different realms like success in podcast success in your personal life success in like a specific thing that you're looking for but i'm assuming that they, she means personal life i think so yeah too. but like if your basic physiological needs are met mm-hmm. if you're safe and secure if you have, you know, uh, people that love you surrounding you, so friends mm-hmm. and family, if you have a good self-esteem, so your mental health is in check mm-hmm. and you have self-actualization, you know yourself, why wouldn't you be successful? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing your CEO of a company and you make multi-million dollar deals. And so mm-hmm. you're a multi-millionaire. I just mean like from the very basic sense. Yeah. And that's and, successful in this life. Like if you mean successful in this life and the next, like at the end of the day, at that point, it's like, your success is measured by like how if you have full reliance on a lot then that's you're successful at that point because let's say you lose everything mm. if you still have your full reliance on a lot and your trust in him and everything then in your heart you're still successful because you're still promised to hereafter so you know there, there, there's your 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 dean point of the day today <laughs> <laughs> hafsa also asked mm-hmm. Something you both learned about yourselves slash each other from doing the podcast. What have you learned? I learned that I I learned two things about myself. One, mm-hmm. that I'm a lot more introspective than I thought I was. And two, that I feel like I have like more social anxiety than you do. What? Yeah. Sometimes. You know what? It's because um, I've I've had to deal with it. I've had to like deal with it early on in my life and like create uh coping mechanisms for it and like ways to get around it or or to mask it early on in my life so it seems like i have better control well i do have better control of it essentially it's not that i have less of it i just know how to control it better so maybe you just need to learn you know (laughs) to go through the same steps okay but but i've never dealt with social anxiety Mm -hmm. until covid hit Mm-hmm. and i don't know what happened i just like it changed me i guess it changed a lot of people <laughs> yeah and so when i first experienced mm-hmm. it i'm like oh my god what's happening oh why, why aren't i comfortable you know yeah. um but in terms of like what i learned about you you're someone who thrives in routine mm-hmm. i mean i kind of already knew that but like you're also yeah, very a, okay, determined Mm-hmm. And like also very smart, mashallah. Like, <laughs> I hate you know. I don't like talking about myself. Don't, don't, it's no, okay. but I'm just you're saying. Good. Like, no, no, I learned okay. so much from yeah. you 
where i think i was telling this to somebody mm-hmm. i'm like yeah i don't watch the news like i just wait for our weekly sessions mm-hmm. and amir teaches me something new that's one thing i've learned about you <laughs> you live under a rock <laughs> I used to think you <laughs> lived under a rock, but it's actually it's me. actually you. <laughs> oh, so okay. that's what you learned about me that I live under. No, but I feel like I know some some huh? things. I know some things. Well, I learned from f- just going off of t- on conversations with you that like the things that I thought were more like general knowledge and people mm-hmm. actually knew were going on. Yeah, most people don't really know that they're going <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm just assuming that you're like a a good indication of the general public when it comes to things that are going on. Okay. I represent I'm using you pop. as that reference. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> so, so in the comments, you know, you can leave it. If you can just let us know right now if Sada really is just living under a rock. No, because sometimes in the comments, people mm-hmm. are like, "Nah, it's just useless." <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, I, guess I am do. on my own <laughs> island. I don't represent Gen Pop yeah, anymore. From now on, like, let's call back your Patrick Star from now on. <laughs> 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 only, only original like OGs will know that reference. If you know the Patrick Star <laughs> reference, that means let us know. Comment down below. I forget if you know which we're episode that's from. This is a while ago. I wish I could reference it right now. I'll find it and and I need to learn. Yeah, some of my I'll greatest editing in. had to go into that. I that you know what back yeah. to the previous question about most mm-hmm. memorable moment was that what that moment the Patrick <gasps> actually thing. you know what yeah that is we were like crying with tears streaming like, like I wish the camera didn't cut now that you mention it is a memorable moment, like I couldn't remember it clearly yeah. because I could only remember the hot ones yeah but like now that you mentioned that that's like probably one of the funniest moments yeah in aside from the hot ones challenge yeah exactly i agree and unfortunately like for people who don't know like our camera died something happened right before mm-hmm. that moment occurred and yeah. like it was we were literally like cr- like almost crawling on the floor laughing <laughs> and the <laughs> and camera like, was not on yeah tears. thankfully i wasn't caught on camera honestly. true <laughs> true but i just remember like mm-hmm I don't even know if we ended the episode because we were laughing so hard mm-hmm. for like a good five minutes. No, I think I, I eventually found out the camera was like dead oh. after we stopped like <laughs> Damn. It rubbed the tears from our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, what did you learn about yourself? About myself? Mm-hmm. Um, shoot, I'm so bad at this, Sarah. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, 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 Stop. Do, do. I'm supposed to say you focus oh, on yeah, what you bad. learned. I, I literally got distracted. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like don't do that um i'm more resourceful than i thought no i always knew i was resourceful <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you really tapped into your creativity I, but i've always been like one to love tapping into my creativity okay yeah i know right that's why you know i, I honestly i kind of do myself before this is what you think okay i'm just saying okay mm. no 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 okay 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 let me get serious okay do a brain Seven blast. Minutes. Okay, what? How did he do it again? <laughs> Shit. Uh, okay. Like this and like, you know. <laughs> just like have a, a visual representation of a Can you tell mind. me what I learned about myself? <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? I okay. literally can't remember what I learned about myself. Okay, you, you, In general, I feel like you did learn a lot about yourself. But one of the things that you probably learned is... I can tell you what I have learned. Okay. But I like I've learned a lot more about editing and like developing my skills in that sense. But when it comes to learning more about myself it's do you feel like, like we through the podcast like we really tapped into mm-hmm. speaking okay, of, okay okay i got something here okay, okay so i did learn about my uh, one thing i learned about myself is that like i assumed a lot about what other people thought mm-hmm. but was like quickly it was quickly shown that like i don't know really what people are thinking like i, I like i mentioned i assumed that like a lot of people knew about certain topics that i would just kind of rattle off but at the end of the day, like it's not what I thought was was common knowledge yeah. is not as common knowledge. So one thing I learned myself is that I just assume a lot. I assume what people are capable of and like what the general um, consensus is on something. And I realize that I'm more of the minority than the majority. So that's one thing that I've definitely uh, learned over time, just from speaking to you and seeing replies from the podcast and everything. Is that yeah? I don't I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely true, mm-hmm. cause like I feel like the the people that see our TikToks, mm-hmm. they they think like you, cause a lot of them they be on your side for <laughs> a lot of the points you make. But then like it always seems like the majority of the people, maybe it's because people don't really think about some of the stuff that we speak about, right? Mm-hmm. Then once people are challenged with that thought, or they have to think about it more deeply, yeah, then they realize where the holes in their logic are like, um, okay, this just makes it sound like I'm saying I I know more than everybody else and everybody just needs to get on my my wavelength but you know sometimes 
I just I, I, I just be knowing stuff, you know. I'm just saying, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. Just I'm done. Okay, mm-hmm. and you said that you learned that I don't know. I live under a rock. Yeah, is what you learned about me. Okay. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. Next question is from <laughs> Fiza Javid. Javid. What? Fiza Javid. I thought you had a stroke for a second. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Would you ever relocate?" Would I ever relocate? I think we talked about that. Yeah. We yes. Relocate. We would. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Next question. What is your opinion on a Muslim guy saying he doesn't want to marry a hijabi? That would, that would be like a red flag, of course, because like the hijab, the fact that he's saying that he wants someone without one, like it says basically what his priorities are. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think at that point you kind of can tell right away. Okay. The, like Islam is not his priority. Being religious is not his priority. And, but then again, the hijab doesn't really tell it, it makes it tells you more about his assumptions than uh, who he's going for because like there are hijabis who may be even less religious than non hijabis right so wait am I, is my logic right there one second one, you're saying like this. his perception of hijabis is probably that she's too religious for him and probably you know he wouldn't have a connection okay. right yeah so like yeah so his per- yeah basically his perception you know what you said. <laughs> You know, I'm going to cut out that part from before where I made myself look stupid for a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm just cutting that out. Yeah, I will never see that. That will never see the light of day. <laughs> you know what? Like, I think for me, if I ever heard a man tell me like, oh, you know, I want to marry someone who doesn't wear hijab. Mm-hmm. Before actually judging, I would be like, why? Like, what's your reasoning? Mm-hmm. Because like, I just, I'm curious to know, like, what do you, what's wrong with someone who wears hijab? Mm-hmm. Like. And and if they're Muslim too, because that's not, like, if you're Muslim, hijab is not a foreign concept to you, you know? Mm-hmm. And even if you're not Muslim, like, I feel like there are enough of us in the world where mm-hmm. you've at least seen one person wearing a hijab. So I would ask them why, um, but it would definitely make me look at them differently. Like, I would kind of just be like, what's your reasoning? Because mm-hmm. sometimes I think there are Muslims out there mm-hmm. who uh, maybe have had, like, a bad experience with the muslim community Mm. you know Mm -hmm. and so then they have these like thoughts in their mind like oh people who are overly religious are um they need to get with the times yeah or or they're judgmental or maybe he feels like he's not at a servant certain level of religiosity and so like Mm -hmm. if he was to marry someone who wears hijab like maybe she would be too strict on him him or judge Mm -hmm. him but i mean at the end of the day if you have if you're picking your spouse and you're picking you're looking for a good muslim like why don't you want someone who is going to hold you accountable that you they're not both- very very forward thinking if they say that because like i guess the ultimate goal is to like grow become a better muslim over time yeah but if they're basing their choices on who they are right now and not kind of thinking about the future mm-hmm. that's what i'm saying it says a lot about how they think which is ironic that you say that they're mm-hmm. not forward thinking because some people think like if you're too religious that you're not forward thinking mm-hmm. and that you're too old-fashioned quote unquote. Yeah. Well, but that's because they're they're essentially trying to adopt the morality of the West versus the mm-hmm. Islamic morality, which is a big issue that the uh, I think we kind of probably can go deeper on eventually yeah, I feel about like, we like talk people about who that. adopt uh, who don't even realize that they're adopting the Western morality, a sense of morality versus the Islamic sense of morality. Yeah, so that's that's yeah. what we think about that one. Yeah, um, and then here's a really good one too. This is a thought provoking one. What? What do you think your purpose in life is, obviously, apart from to serve Allah? So aside from the, the very, mm-hmm. like, the basic purpose, which was what we know, mm-hmm. is we, we were created to um, basically obey Allah. We we're created, like, everyone is should be following their, uh, sorry, not following, but, like, doing their obligations, avoiding the sins, mm-hmm. being the best Muslim that they could possibly be. Like, that's our general purpose to mm-hmm. be in this world, uh, in this dunya. But aside from that... What do you feel like your purpose is? Well, like there's like a personal purpose or like thing. For me, I just like to create stuff. Mm-hmm. So as if I can like be become more creative over time and be able to share that creativity over time, not only in like the podcast realm, but in other stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I'm always dabbling in other creative realms. So um, I feel like my purpose is just to create stuff, like just to, to be creative and, and not and not limit it to one thing, like do as many things as I can, just for my own personal 
um not choice what do you call it like self come on sada satisfaction yes for my own personal satisfaction God, I got you. why is that so hard to forget so i was like what's what is he thinking you know, you know what i need to do i need to you stop know? i need to get out of like podcast brain sometimes i need to just get into regular need to conversation doing? brain what stop putting so much pressure on me to like try to figure out what's in your brain to give you the word that you want to use. No, nah, but you should you be on my wavelength. You notice okay? that Amir does that all the time. <laughs> Every single week, he'll be like, what's the word, Sada? I'm like, shit, what is he? Sometimes I'd be cutting it out too. I just wait till like, you give me the word. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually? Sometimes. <laughs> You're like, I don't want them to yeah. know she gave me this word. <laughs> but yeah, my purpose personally is like to be as creative as possible, not limited to anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that's a purpose, I guess. But mm-hmm. like outwardly, I feel like it's to be a good example for the future generation uh specifically like i guess for for men for like the young guys it'd be a good example for them for someone to look up to i feel like that would be a good purpose so like in all aspects of like you know making sure to show be respectful and like uh show them that like you can have your own personality you can like be a good person you can do the things that you want to do Mm -hmm. but still uh be a good muslim and be a good representation of islam you know what i'm saying yeah that so that's one. what it is i like that yeah because you want you, you always want to make sure that there's like good examples out there and i want to make sure that i'm setting one of those examples or being one of those good examples there you go that's mine okay what's yours sarah mine i feel like my purpose i've always like found joy in in helping people inspiring people mm-hmm. making them feel a sense of belonging and like making people feel heard. Mm-hmm. I feel like those are the things that I've kind of done my entire life mm-hmm. and continue to do as as this platform grows. Mm-hmm. Um, and help people not in the sense of like, like help in, in any capacity really, like whatever capacity I can. Mm-hmm. It could look different for per, from person to person, but that's what I would say my purpose. Like I genuinely find joy in that. So you just want, your purpose is to serve essentially other people see yeah you, you don't no know no that's not a bad thing <laughs> no, 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 that's no, not no, a bad no, thing no. yeah to be of service be to be of service you know what i think it is like that's a, that's a very similar purpose to like i i have that same purpose but like um i i don't know i i guess maybe i just mentioned the other one but i Yours feel like more, that's that i feel like that's part of it what i mentioned more to inspire yeah to inspire by uh, also doing acts of service because I feel like you kind of have to lead by example, right? So, like, if I use an example of, like, being at the Islamic Center, if the younger generation sees you being of service to the community, mm-hmm. then they might more likely in the future see you as an inspiration to be a, of, of service to the community. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm like, you know, you kind of lead, lead by example. And that's kind of, like, one of the parts to what I was mentioning earlier, yeah. being of service. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and watch them be in the comments like, hey, you ain't inspiring me. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for sending your questions in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure we'll do more Q&As as time goes on. Now, yeah, I feel like before we end the podcast, we should reply to some of your comments. Yeah. Okay. I put down, okay, I'm going to stop the accent. I'm sorry. You know. You couldn't keep it up. Huh? Yeah, I can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay so we got a few comments from the last episode i just wanted to highlight here for mm-hmm, y'all mm-hmm. we got a couple reoccurring guests you know a couple new people here uh we've seen the numbers going up there we've seen more comments keep leaving in there we're gonna keep uh, highlighting them on the episodes or at the end of the on end of, ugh, at the end of the episodes i really have like heavy tongue today i don't know what it is let's start with amina amina she starts off with assalamu alaikum Wa alaykum, Wa alaykum salam. salam. Okay. Just some genuine nasiha. If you truly want to find a spouse, then make dua to Allah sincerely. Your chances of dua getting accepted increase the more righteous you are. So maybe you can start off by cutting down on sins and increasing your worship. May Allah, may Allah guide us all. Ameen. Ameen. And honestly, people don't realize that there are certain like sins that you might be reoccurring things that you're doing that may actually be what's like blocking your blessings yeah, from coming through, right? So sure. by like stopping, even if it may be something minor, 
when you stop that that can be like the door that opens up mm -hmm. for getting your dua re received or for for accepted. getting accepted sorry yeah so uh that's why it's always good to you know kind of emphasize like you know um do the good and forbid the bad yeah because you never know what could be blocking your blessings exactly so that's a very important thing to keep in mind especially if you there's something in your life that you really want and i've been really been praying for mm -hmm. like pay attention to all the other aspects of your life that may be affecting that that's and, really good advice thank you amina for sharing yeah that. and we also have uh zainab here who commented great episode guys Regarding connecting to Allah and mental health, I 100% agree with you. And I also, and I'll also add that apart from trying to do all the basics, i.e., prayers and Quran recitation, people should try as much. Oh, it's literally uh, the same. That's yeah, the that's comment the I was one. looking for. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try as much as possible to refrain from disobeying Allah. For example, stop doing what is prohibited for Muslim for the Muslim. Uh, some of the sins we see as nothing be, may be what actually causes. Uh, all the issues in our lives. May Allah help us become better Muslims, inshallah. So, I mean, and, and that's actually basically reiterating what I just mentioned there. And that was a <laughs> comment that I was, I was actually looking for earlier. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's a way, that's another thing to keep in mind, of, like I just mentioned earlier. Yeah, just pay attention to the sins that may be blocking your blessings. And um, now for a reoccurring guest, you know, from the podcast or listener, I guess, is Dan denial oh my i'm so bad denial dina <laughs> dina <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh it's dina it's dina l refai <laughs> so she said um what did she say yeah she's like amir that's wild because i'm turning 30 in a few months and still have anxiety nightmares that i'm in high school or college and have an exam or presentation so that's replying to uh, how i mentioned last time like we're in our 30s at this point like i think we're over it mm -hmm. but apparently there are still people out here who are still having those bad dreams about exams and tests but i guess it really depends on how long you're in school for because there's some people who are going in, who are still in school like into their late 20s yeah so so i could see that happening. yeah but i'm gonna, I'm gonna assume here that she finished school around the same time we did yeah uh but yeah i would see i can see that happening where like it just randomly it hits you maybe we're just the exception to the rule in that case <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh and one more comment i had here mm -hmm. is from the one that i struggled to say and continue to struggle to say sumami lisa mm -hmm. if i'm saying that wrong i'm sorry okay it says just touching on taking care of yourself topic our bodies are are on a are on a mana from allah it belongs to him and we should do our best to take care of it if we are active and eat good with that in mind even uh, we even it. get ajr for it. Hence the hadith, actions are according to intentions and everyone will get what is intended. So, yeah, that's, uh, I guess, if you're looking for a religious reason to do the things that I've been, you know, preaching out here on the podcast, like the Prophet himself told you, you know, just take care of your body, man. So, like, because this is, it does you you don't own this body. I think I mentioned that before. Technically, we're all, well, we are all slaves to Allah and we should take care of what he has blessed us with, right? And be thankful. And one way of showing that you're thankful for it is by taking care of yourself. So Thanks. this um, that's another thing to keep in mind. And if you have the right intention when you're doing those things, you get, like she mentioned, you get reward for it. So just keep that in mind when you're um, doing these things. We actually spoke about intentions in uh, our last Ramadan series from last mm -hmm. year um, where we spoke about you know being intention mm -hmm. intentional about the acts which can then turn it into you know rewardable acts like mm -hmm. everyday mundane tasks like going to work yeah you know could be rewardable eating a, a healthy breakfast could be rewardable mm -hmm. working out could be rewardable so like it's all about intention so that's a great you know. yeah like even today mm -hmm. just to give one example so um i'm always trying to like, like i mentioned i'm trying to be like a good example out here right so i'm always trying to emphasize to like the younger men like even just the intention of doing something good is rewardable yeah. and like every step you take towards doing that you are rewarded for it because uh we have someone who's actually disabled at the center and when they're leaving the center we help them to like you know get them into from their regular inside wheelchair to the one that they use outside and Typically, it only takes maybe one or two men to help him. But 
I still told like all the younger guys out there, they're not doing anything at that moment. The lesson's over. They're just kind of sitting down in school on their phones. And then like, of course, it took a lot of convincing and literally picking these guys up off the floor. But like, I'm trying to break into the heads that like, even you getting up and intending to go and help someone to do something like this for the sake of Allah, mm -hmm. even if you, even if you in your mind say, oh, there's no reason there's someone out there over there already helping him you just going there you're getting rewarded for that so it's always good to keep that in mind like just the intention of doing something good even if you feel like your help will be very minuscule yeah in that sense could save you from that one action can save you from uh, could be, could, the could be the reason that you enter jannah so that's one thing to keep in mind like even the smallest actions can be your door to jannah or your key to jannah i don't know how you'd say it exactly but you know i'm just saying just intentions guys it's very exactly. important yeah so yeah, do you have anything else to say there um no you honestly summarized that perfectly so okay so we're gonna end the podcast here again if you like this podcast if you thought it was entertaining in any way i don't even know what we talk i'm gonna have to go back and listen to what we talk about i completely forgot but <laughs> yeah if you liked it maybe you make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel or we hit sub six thousand subscribers but you know end of year goal ten thousand hundred percent. Exactly. We will hit ten thousand. Yeah, inshallah. we're working on it. Inshallah, we'll we'll hopefully get some more guests on here too. Mm -hmm. And we're working on that currently. We'll work on a few other things, like you mentioned, with the live thing. Maybe not this year, okay? Maybe eventually. But until then, subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates. Subscribe. Follow us on all our social media platforms, Cousin Connection Pod on like TikTok and Instagram, so we get the latest updates there as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that should be. Until next time, we'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Nice.